Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from LeetCode called Find First and Last Position of Element in Sorted Array. It's a medium. We're going to jump right into it. Given an array of integers num sorted in non-decreasing order, find the starting and ending position of a given target value. If target is not found in the array, return a list of negative 1 and negative 1. So the starting and ending position. You must write an algorithm with O of log n runtime complexity. So with the log n runtime complexity, this is sort of a dead giveaway that we want to be using binary search. And we know we want to find both the starting and ending position of a target value. So this means that we want to run this back twice, right? First, we are going to run binary search to find that first position. And then again, to find that last position. Example one, we have our input nums and target is eight. What is the first position of the eight? That is at index three. And the last one would be at index four. Example two, we have input nums and target is six. It doesn't occur anywhere, so there is no starting or ending position. So we output negative one, negative one. And finally, example three, we have nothing in our input nums. So if we want to look for a target, of course, it's not going to be there. And again, we'll output the same thing of a list of negative one and negative one. In order to solve this, we know we want to be using a binary search. So how are we going to do this? Well, let's take a look at example one over here. We have our input nums and target is eight. Say we want to find the first occurrence of our target first. So let's write a function to find that first occurrence first, right? Let's define that. Let's call it first search. And what are we going to be passing in? Anytime we have a binary search, we always want to pass in our bounds because that's what we're going to be searching based off. So all we need is a left and right bound. Now with a binary search, a cheat code in order to solve this, all we need are two pointers, left bound and right bound. We're going to find what that midpoint is, see how it compares to what we're looking for. And based on that, either move left in or right in. So we keep going until our two left and right pointers merge in the middle. So while left is less than right, we want to keep going. And what do we want to do? We want to find that midpoint. So mid is going to equal left plus right integer divided by two. So looking at this example over here, we know we are going to start off initially with our two ends over here. So left is going to be index zero and right is going to be index five. We want to find our midpoint. So in this case, zero plus five is five. Integer dividing that by two will give us two, right? Anytime we integer divide, we just cut off whatever we have in the decimal. So essentially every single time we round down. So zero plus five is five. Integer dividing that by two is going to be two. So we have our mid at index two. Now we want to see how the nums at this index compares to what we're looking for. So if nums at mid so what we have here, which is seven, if this is less than our target, which it is, right? So if nums of mid is less than target, what do we want to do? Remember, we want to find that first occurrence right now. And we know wherever we are right now doesn't equal the target we want. So we're going to move our left bound up to be after our midpoint. We're not where we need to be. So we want to go up. So we're going to move left down to be mid plus one. So now left would be at index three. And we just completed one iteration of our binary search, right? We cut our scope in half. So now once we go back in this while loop, left is still less than right. So we can go in here. We find a new midpoint. Left is three, right is five. Three plus five is eight. Eight integer divided by two is four. So mid is going to be four. And we check what we have in nums of mid. Nums of mid is eight. It's not less than target. So what do we want to do in this case? Remember, we want to find that first occurrence of our number. So we want to move right down to be mid. Maybe this is the first occurrence. Maybe there's something behind us. We don't know. We just want to move right up to wherever we are right now. So else right is going to equal mid exactly, which means right goes to index four. Now we go back in this while loop left is still less than right. We find a new midpoint. So three plus four is going to be seven. Seven divided by two should have been 3.5, but we are integer dividing, which rounds down. So instead of 3.5, we are going to go to three which works for us because we want that first occurrence anyway. So if we bias down toward lower indices, that is exactly what we want, which means our mid is now index three. We find what we have at nums of mid. This is not less than target. So we're going to go in this else and we're going to move right down to be mid. So right is also at index three. Now we can't go back in this while loop because left is no longer less than right. They are both pointing at the same indices. And so we can return whatever index we are on. It doesn't matter if we return left or right, they're going to converge to the same point. So we can return left or right. It doesn't matter. Now, the only thing is, what if we never find our number? If that's the case, if we never actually find a number, we converge without finding the target we want. We want to return negative one. So we want to return left if nums of left equals target. 
else, we want to return negative one. And now we want to actually call this function for that first occurrence. So first is going to equal first search with left and right bound. So in the beginning, it's going to be the entire end of our array. So index zero and length of nums minus one. And before we get into our last occurrence, let's actually also run a quick example to see when we'd actually be returning negative one. So say we have the following input, we have five, seven, seven, and our target is eight. We're going to be calling our first occurrence. So we're going to be passing in zero and length of nums minus one. So two as our left and right pointers. So left is zero and R is two. We go in this function over here while left is less than right. That's true. We find the midpoint. So zero plus two is two. Integer dividing that by two is going to be one. We have mid over here and nums of mid is less than target. So we're going to move left up to be mid plus one. So now left is going to be index two. We don't go in this else because we went in this if, and we also can't go back in this while loop, right? Left is no longer less than our right. So we exit and we want to return. Now we would have returned left. So index two, if what we had at index two, so nums of two equaled our target. In this case, it doesn't, right? So we're going to return negative one because we were actually never able to find that first occurrence of our target. So now that we have a function for the first occurrence of our target done, we want to repeat the same thing, but find the last occurrence for our target. How are we going to write this out? Let's just make another function. So def last search, we are searching for that last occurrence of our number. And we are going to be passing in left to right bounds. Same thing while left is less than right. While they don't converge in the middle, we want to find our midpoint. So mid is going to equal left plus right integer divided by two. So say we are using the same example again, we have left being index zero, right being index five. We find out what our midpoint is. So zero plus five is five. If we were to divide that by two, that'd be 2.5, but this is integer division. So we round down, we go to two, which means mid is over here. So what do we want to do here? We want to do the exact opposite of what we did up here. So if nums of mid is greater than our target, we've overshot it, say our mid for whatever reason right now, instead of pointing at seven was actually 10. If we are greater than our target, we want to move our right bound in. So we're going to move our right to be mid minus one. Else, if that is not the case, so over here, right, we're not greater than the target, we are less than equal to it. We could be less than it or we could be equal to it. So we want to move to mid exactly. What if we're equal to it, right? So left is going to equal mid exactly. So in this case, left goes to index two over here. We go back in this while loop, left is still less than right. We find our midpoint, two plus five is seven, Integer dividing that by two is going to be three. Sums of mid is eight. It is not greater than our target, so we're in this else condition over here. We're going to move left up to be mid. Left is now index three. We go back in this loop. Left is still less than right. Our new midpoint is going to be eight, integer divided by two, so it's going to be four. Sums of mid, so what we have at eight, again, it's not greater than target, so we're going to go in this else and we're moving left to be mid. So left is now index four. We're slowly incrementing toward that last occurrence of our target. We go back in our while loop, left is still less than right. What is our mid? Left plus right, so four plus five is nine. Integer dividing that by two is gonna be four. So mid is gonna stay exactly where it is, right? Nums of mid is not greater than target. So we go in this else and left is gonna equal mid, so it's gonna stay where it is. But this is going to cause an infinite loop, right? We didn't make any progression in this iteration for left to get closer to right. And why is that? When we integer divide, remember, we're rounding down, which worked great when we wanted to find that first occurrence. We wanted it to converge on that lower side, but now we want to converge on our upper side. So instead of biasing toward the lower indices, we want to bias up and we want to round up. So an easy fix for this is just to add a one to our mid. So instead of doing left plus right integer divided by two, what we can do is left plus right plus one integer divided by two. And why does this work, right? Say our sum equals 10. If we were to integer divide by two, we would get five. But now if we were to add one, our new sum is going to be 11. And if we were to integer divide that by two, it would still be five. We would get 5.5, but we don't care for decimals. But what if our sum was 11? If we were to divide this by two, we would get 5.5. And if it's an integer division, it would be five. So we're rounding down, not up. But now if we add one, our sum would actually go up to 12. And if we were to integer divide by two now, we would get six. We're rounding up now, right? Instead of down. So this is how it's going to fix this infinite loop over here. 
So how would this play out with this change over here? Let's just run this through quickly from the beginning. Left is going to start off at index 0, right is going to be index 5, left is less than right. We find our midpoint, so 0 plus 5 plus 1, which is 6, integer divided by 2, which is 3. So mid is 3 over here, nums of mid is not greater than target, so we go in this else and we move left up to be mid. So left is now index 3, we go back in this while loop, left is still less than right. What is our new midpoint? 3 plus 5 plus 1, which is 9. Integer divide that by 2, we get 4. So mid is now 4, nums of mid, which is 8, it's not greater than target, we go in this else, and we move left up to be mid. So left is now 4. We go back in this while loop, left is still less than right. We find out our new midpoint. So left plus right, so 4 plus 5 plus 1, remember we want to round up now. So 4 plus 5 plus 1 will give us 10, integer dividing that by 2 will give us 5. So now mid and right are both at 5. We check what we have. Nums of mid is greater than target. So we want to move right down to be mid minus 1. Now since we went in this if, we're not going to go in this else. And now we can go back in this while loop because left is no longer less than right. They've converged at index 4, the last occurrence of our target. So now all we need to do is return. We are going to return left or right. It doesn't matter. They're both going to be at the same index. So we return left if nums of left equals target else we return negative one and we want to call this for our last occurrence so last is going to equal last search passing in our left and right bound so it's going to be zero and length of nums minus one and all we want to do is return all of this in list form so we are going to return a list of first occurrence and last occurrence now there was a edge case over here. If nums was empty, we just want to return negative one, negative one. We don't even want to go in here. So let's just write that out over here. If not nums, if we're given nothing in our input, we are just going to return negative one, negative one right away. There's no need to do anything. So this is our function overall. Let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now talk about space and time complexity. For time, this is a log n solution. We're just running binary search twice. And binary search is log n because we're just cutting our input size in half every single time. So overall, this is log n. We run binary search for the first occurrence and the last occurrence. And space is going to be constant because all we're doing is keeping track of three variables, left, right, and middle. So we just went ahead and solved find first and last position of element in sorted array. If you have any questions, let me know down below. If this video was helpful, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.